Hi, my name is Cal Gerard, and I'm a Plains Cree male beadwork artist from Sturgeon Lake, Saskatchewan, located on Treaty 6 territory. Uh, so I am a recent graduate of the first cohort of the Mioskaman Innovation and Entrepreneurship Program offered here at SIIT. So the small business that I went into the program with was a beadwork business, as well as like a content creation business banded with the beadwork. Um, so basically a lot of what I do on social media is TikToks uh, surrounding beadwork. I'll do Instagram posts and Facebook posts as well. So in honor of Orange T-shirt Day today, we're filming um, an orange t-shirt making pin tutorial. I was asked by the lovely staff here at the Maker Lodge here at SIIT. So I do custom beadwork orders. You can find me on all social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Cal Ryland Design Co. So first we'll go over the, um, the kits here that we got from his bead store here in Saskatoon. So it comes with the business card, comes with a picture of what the pin might, may or may not look like. I'm not going to follow this fully, but comes with a piece of the pellet to actually bead onto. Comes with your beads, of course. I got like a nice clear orange finish here for the beadwork. Comes with a little pattern here so that you'll kind of stitch down here and I'll give you a little bit more instruction in regards to that. Comes with some leather vinyl backing to stitch and um, pull the beadwork together with. Of course, some more black beads. And then I will be showing you guys with the two needle method. So my kit comes with two needles. The pin finding here, the thread, and the E6000 glue. All right, so to get started, what I would do first is I would thread your needles. So I'll get all this other stuff out of the way here. Your scissors ready. So yeah, you may have to re-thread your needles once or twice for each beaded project, sometimes a little bit more depending on how big it is. So you can kind of just guesstimate a size and just keep adjusting as you go. So I'll get my first needle ready here. So when you're using the two needle method, um, one of your needles is going to hold onto your beads and then the other needle that you'll be using will be actually stitching the beads down to the, uh, to the pellin. It's always a bit of a process getting this, the needles threaded at times. <laughs> All right, so now I've got the first needle threaded. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take the little t-shirt pattern outline here and we're actually going to attach that to the pellet. So what you'll do is you'll take your needle and you'll go through the bottom and you can go towards the edges or the center. It doesn't really matter because this is only attaching the outline to the pellet so that it stabilizes it and it doesn't move as you're trying to beat it. So I kind of just went in the center here and then I'll go towards like the outline just to kind of tack it down so it doesn't move a lot as I'm trying to actually bead onto it. So we'll just get that stabilized here with some thread. So you will have these extra like longer strings at the back once you do get a needle and thread in there. So what I usually do is I'll just cut it super short and if you have a lighter with you, it's also good to kind of burn it down right to the bottom because it kind of seals it. So we'll get those cut off here. And one other thing that's a good idea to do when you're beating onto your felt is if you have the square corners, sometimes your thread can tend to get caught on these when you're actually doing the beading stitches. So in one little tip that I've learned, honestly, probably through TikTok was just kind of cutting around the edges to round them. So then you're way less likely to get it caught on there. And if it, it still can happen, but it's way less likely to happen. Cause sometimes if you do like these squared edges, I know when I was first starting, I'd find like, I'd have a lot of beads tacked down and then all of a sudden I'd find the string like caught on the corner, then I'd have to kind of start all over. So a good little tip there when you're first starting for sure. All right. I'll get the garbage out of the way. So now you've got your pattern here tacked down and ready. You can use the same um, needle here to hold your beads. 
So yeah, with the two needle method, as I mentioned, one needle will be holding the beads and one will be um, stitching the beads down. I like to start at the top or bottom of the pattern so that I can, um, it kind of attaches the patterns a little easier once you're getting like all your lines together. All right, so I've got my first needle ready here. So now we're gonna do a quick threading of the other needle. This can kind of take a few seconds, especially when you're filming it. <laughs> so now you've got your second um, needle ready here. So this one's gonna be the needle that you use to stitch your beads down. So one thing that I like to use when I bead is a some kind of material surface if you're beading on like a tabletop just because it's a little easier to grab the beads and then they aren't rolling all over the place. So for me how I typically bead like patterns and designs um, that I want to bead is I'll start with the outlines first. I find that makes the bead work go the smoothest for me. So I'll just get my black beads ready to, to go first because I'm going to be using the black beads to outline my t-shirts here. So won't be even using nearly all of these beads here. So first things first, um, I like to stitch down every two beads. So I'll usually do six to eight beads on the needle at once. And then I'll kind of group all, stitch all six beads down before grabbing more. So I'll get those all on my needle here, as you can see. <clears throat> So for this one, because you're not beating around a cabochon, you've kind of got to just use your finger to hold the lines as straight as you can. So let's see here. Perfect. So you're kind of going to go underneath your pattern here and you're going to stitch down your first two beads. So just right through the bottom, you'll go. You'll pull the needle through the top all the way so that the back of the um, needle where the knot is, is right to the back of the pellet. And then you'll go right over the other side of the beads here on top to stitch the first two beads down. So as I mentioned before, sometimes these longer strings in the back can kind of, um, can kind of um, be a little annoying in the process. So it's easy to like cut them off like fairly early on once you have like your um, stuff tacked down. So I'm just going to tack down at least four beads and then I'm going to cut off the excess thread in the back there. So with this one you can hold the pellet up against a light source to kind of see where your beads are but as you keep going you'll kind of get um, a better idea as to how much space each beads kind of um, take up on the back there. So you won't have to use the light as much to see how many beads you need to tack down. So I got my first four beads tacked down. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut the excess string off here in the back, just so I don't get it confused with any of my other needles and threads here since I'm using the two needle method. Let's see here, there you go. Perfect, okay. So, you'll just keep using your black beads to go along the outline here. So I'm going towards the other, sh the shoulder of the t-shirt here. So again, just using your fingers to hold down the beads and the thread there in the straightest line that you possibly can and just going around six to eight beads at a time. So there's no correct or incorrect number to hold on to the thread. Some people can do a lot at a time. Some people can do not as many. I just prefer six because it makes my bead work the cleanest. It's just a preference for me. Just still going along, holding the thread and beads in as straight of a line as you can with, the, um, with your finger here. So one of the main things we're taught as beaters is to only create when you're in like a really good space to create. So if you're like beating should be therapeutic. So if you're finding that you're getting frustrated because the designs aren't working out or the patterns aren't the color pattern you chose, what didn't really turn out well, it's best to kind of just walk away from your work, give it a little bit because we want to put like the best energy we can into the, um, into the work that we create because it's kind of like a, 
a nice process like that and you want to have all your work filled with good energy and good intentions. So just about finishing my outline here for the t-shirt. So as you can see, I've got about um, enough space here for two beads. So I've got my two beads ready. Um, sometimes they won't fit absolutely perfect with the, out with the um, to connect the beads here at the end of that outline. So you'll just try your best to kind of hold it in place here with your fingers. And then you'll stitch it down through the bottom like you have been. So just really trying your best to maintain that straight line there and you'll go through the top. Perfect, all right. So I've got that tacked down now. So now that your beadwork's all, um, your lines are all connected for the outline, you'll notice that your string is, um, that you held the beads with is still on top. So what you'll do is you'll go right in the middle of the last two beads that you, um, of the first bead you tack down and the last one that you tack down. So you'll go right in the center with your um, thread and needle that you use to hold your beads, just right in the middle through the bottom. And that'll secure the row of beads here. So we've got our pattern here. So next part that we are going to move on to will be the actual um, orange beads that we're gonna fill the shirt with. So I'll just kind of group all the black beads onto the one side because we're still gonna use those to edge the and afterwards. I'm just looking at the pattern here. I think the um, my plan of attack will be to just go through um, the inside of the outline first with orange beads. So I'll kind of start from a similar spot here on the t-shirt towards like the center. So what you'll do is um, you'll get your thread and needle ready that you're using to hold your beads. You'll go kind of in the back of your felt here, your pellin and you'll go lower than the line that you last completed. Cause if you go, if you follow your same stitching line, you're kind of going to be poking through the beads and knocking them out of place. So you won't want to do this as much. Cause as you can see, it kind of warps the lines a little bit. You'll want to go lower to start a new row of beads there so that it doesn't warp your outline that you started. So as I mentioned before, just getting my six beads ready to be stitched down to start filling the inside of the t-shirt. So as I mentioned, my plan of attack is just to go on the inside of the outline I just completed and then I'll start filling in the second outline of orange beads with more orange beads. So I got my six beads that I'm holding down straight again with my finger. These ones will be a little bit easier to hold in a straight line because you've got the restraint of the outline you already started, the outlining beads. So you'll just hold that nice and tight with your finger. You'll go down towards your pellet like you have been for the, outline, for the first outline of beads. And you'll go through the top and then you'll tack down two beads here. So just like we have been with the black outline beads here, we'll just keep going. Okay, so just going to complete this first row of beads because as you can see here, my thread is getting shorter. So once I'm done with this row of beads here, I will um, show you guys how I go about starting a new needle for the beads. Perfect. All right, so I finished that first row of orange beads here. Um, so the thread and needle that I was using to hold the beads is getting very short. So what I'm gonna do is I will go through the center of the first bead that I tacked down and the last bead that I tacked down, just right through the middle to poke through the back. Then what I'll do is I will cut the thread off here. And then to secure it down, you just have to tie like a few knots here. So again, sometimes after you tie your knots, you can trim the, the excess string a lot um, shorter, and then you can use a lighter to burn it to kind of seal those ends. But we'll show you guys just a quick way for tutorial purposes. So I got my knots tied, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut the string extremely short, right close to the knot there, so it doesn't get in the way at all. Perfect. Okay. So um, because I'm going to be starting a new thread for this needle here, I'm actually going to use 
my last needle that I still do have intact to hold the beads next. So what I'll do is I'll find a spot in the back here, a lot lower than, a little lower than the last row of beads you did here so that you aren't poking through the row there. So I'm just finding a good starting spot here, perfect. So now this string and needle through the top here will be used to hold the beads and I will get my other needle threaded. Okay, so now I've got my second needle and thread here ready again. So you just gotta kinda double to triple knot it here at the first point. And I'll get my next row of orange beads started. So I'm kinda going beading from outwards to inwards for this one. Now that my outlines are placed here. So I got my six beads and we'll get that next row started. So the nice thing, like they are still obviously small, but the nice thing about seed beads is that they do still take up quite a bit of space. So it's not as time consuming as if, as if you were to use um, a lot smaller cut of a beads, like a Charlotte cut bead or whatever. So just filling in all the remaining white space with orange beads is basically all I have left. Stitching down every two beads here as I go. So I'm pretty much onto my last row of the orange beads here. So basically I just have to stitch down this last row of beads, get this trimmed down to the outline of the beads, and then we'll get into actually fastening the um, the pin to the back here and then we'll complete it. All right, getting our last of the orange beads stitched down here. Let's see here. Just going over the other side of the last bead. Got it tacked down with my stitching needle and thread and now I'm gonna take the needle that holds the beads and we'll just go between the last stitch there just to kind of fasten it in here. So here is the orange shirt pin. So basically what I have left to do is just to trim around it a bit here, and then I'll be actually gluing the pin finding to the back here and fastening it all together. Alrighty, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie off both needles and threads here because I will no longer need them for a little bit. So I'd usually do like a double or triple knot. So now we're gonna get to trimming the beadwork. So you're just gonna go as close to the beads as you can without making sure you're not cutting any of the stitches there so none of the beads fall out. All right. So now that you've got your your t-shirt pretty much traced out here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna find a spot on the back here for the pin finding. So this is what you'll use to actually clip it to t-shirts and whatnot. Let's see here. So I'll just take my pen, I'll mark where I want the, um, the finding to go for the pin. Perfect. And then I'll take the E6000 glue. So this glue is a uh, pretty popular glue for beaters. You'll just get it ready here. You'll break the seal at the top. There you go. And you'll take your glue. You'll apply a little layer to the back here. This stuff, this glue is really good. It sticks super, super strongly. So you'll need like a whole lot. So for this one, they do recommend like at least like 30 seconds to a minute just before you actually press it to the surface you're trying to glue it to. So let's give it a little moment here and then I'll attach it to the back of the pin. And we'll get that pressed down. So you'll give the glue at least about two minutes to get nice and dried. Here's the recommended wait period. So while you do that, you can get out your leather or vinyl backing, whatever you're using here. So I used my outline just a little bit smaller than the vinyl that they provided here. So I'm just gonna do a quick tracing job and cut it up accordingly.
perfect. Making sure we don't knock that pin all funny. So then while we're waiting for the pin to dry, I'll get the vinyl and leather cut a little better here to fit it better. So then the next step that you'll take, um, of course, once this is a little bit more dry, is you'll try to map out the slits that you need to cut for the actual pin finding to go through the back of the felt there so that you don't see everything here. So I'll just give this a couple more, probably 30 more seconds or so. So how I do this is I will take the actual pin itself and I will kind of see where it hits the fabric here. So it looks like it's hitting in those two spots there. So what I'll do is I'll take my little pen and I will mark the two spots because those are going to be the two little slits that I cut for the um, for the pin. The other one's right there. And then for this one too, you can add a little bit of extra glue. It doesn't hurt to secure all your little knots here if you weren't using a lighter to kind of get them all intact and secured. So I'll get my E6000 glue laid down. So how this works is I marked where I need to cut the pin to come through the back of the vinyl. So what I'll do is I will take this, I will bend it where the slits are, here. And then you'll want to make sure that you're cutting it in the correct direction so that it actually fits properly. So let's see here. So um, putting the pin through the, one of the first little slits here that I cut, pushing that right down and then getting the other half of the fining through the vinyl as well. So we'll just quickly give that a bit of a pull. I might have to cut this just a little hint wider here. Just about got it here. There you go. And then once it's on, you can kind of pull it a little bit to straighten out the vinyl with it. And then once you have your vinyl piece on the back of your beadwork, you'll kind of see where you need to trim the excess off, but you don't really need to trim a lot off because you'll use some edging beads to stitch it together with the felt that you beat it onto. So I'm just gonna trim the edges of the vinyl Perfect. All right. So now a bulk of the work is actually done. We literally just have the edging beads left to finish. So for edging, um, for your edging thread and needle, I usually go a bit longer with the actual thread here than I normally would if I'm just using my two needle method. So I'll quickly get this. Get myself a decent length here. You won't need a lot either because we're using a, we're just making a little orange shirt pin. So we'll get that ready. So just like I was showing you before here, you'll just thread it normally as you would. Perfect. So for this one, what I will do is I will cut the thread a lot shorter here right off the get-go. Perfect. And so the edging beads that I'm going to use, well, the color of beads that I'm going to use the edge, sorry, will be black, just to kind of get that solid outline look there. So for edging beads as well, I always recommend starting from the top or the bottom towards the middle. So I'll just go through the back of the actual felt and not the vinyl to hide the first little knot there that I tied off for the 
thread. So just going right through the bottom here, you'll pull that off and then it's kind of hidden. So then basically um, you're going to make sure that your thread is between in the center of beads here. There are two, uh, there's a two bead method, three beads, one bead, like there's a lot of different way to edge your, um, to edge your finished products here. So I'll show you guys the three bead method. Perfect, all right, so you'll, um, to edge this, you'll grab, I'll show you guys with the three bead method. So you'll poke it through the back, you'll make sure that your thread is sitting over top here between uh, two beads. You will grab your three beads as I already have here as you can see. And then you'll go over your next three beads here. So one second, I'll show you how that looks. So that's two, three. You'll start to poke your needle through. So sometimes I do have trouble with getting the needle through the vinyl as well. Sometimes over gluing too can cause this to happen, but that's not the case here. It's just a little tough leather. So now that you've got your needle through the vinyl and the, and the pellin, you're basically just gonna pull this tight here and you'll make sure that your three beads actually wrap around the three beads that you counted so that the thread is sitting in between them. So now you got your three beads there. So what you're gonna do next is from the bottom here, you're gonna go over to the last bead that you went through and you're gonna go through the bottom of it and upwards. So right there, like so. Perfect. Just getting that up there. And then you'll pull it tight. So then you'll just continue this same process here with the three beads for every three beads that you have already stitched down. And you'll just go right around this here. And this is the last step of the beading typically, depending on what you're beading of course, but for the pin here, this will be the last step. All right, so we're just kind of connecting the last two beads here. So you're gonna, you, I would try to do three beads all through, but there is only two beads left here. So I went for with two beads for the last two um, edging beads here. So you'll go over your last two beads through the top, pushing that through the vinyl and the pell in there, through the bottom. Perfect, just about got it here. You'll pull that through. Pull that tight there like that, like so. So once you have the edging beads connected, what I like to do is I like to go through the top once again here, through the bottom of the pellin here again. You'll pull your needle through. This will pull your last edging beads very tightly together. Perfect. And then so there are, um, what you'll do next is you can just take your scissors here and then you will tie a couple knots here just to secure your edging beads. So one, two, and three. You'll cut that very short. And then at this point, it's good to use a lighter here to um, burn this right down so it gets close to the, um, so it gets close to the vinyl slash leather and then it'll kind of secure it as well so it doesn't come undone. So here is the finished product, your orange shirt pin. So it's got all the black outline as well as the orange beads filling the center and the black edging beads. And it also has the pin binding here. So as you can see, I did use the match to kind of seal that little knot there so that it doesn't come undone and that all the edging beads stay intact. So yeah, here is the orange shirt pin, the finished product. Orange Shirt Day was created to uh, discuss the effects of residential schools. Orange Shirt Day also honors the Indigenous experiences as well as it affirms the commitment that every child matters. I again thank you for your time and patience throughout the tutorial and I urge you to wear an orange shirt on September 30th.